Hello, my name is Victor Villegas and I'm going to explain in this presentation briefly the study of mathematical approximations for monitoring the state of charge and computing electrolyte volume in vanadium redox flow battery systems, whose authors are Jordi Santana, Victor Villegas, Michael Espinosa, and Martin Anders. For this presentation, the outline is the next. In the introduction, it will be described and defined what vanadium flow batteries are, how their general configuration is, and how they can be related to different applications. At the methodology section, it will be explained the principal equations used in the study to get the results that will be shown in the next section. In the results section, uh, of course, graphics of state of charge and electrolyte volume will be shown. Finally, a summary of the work realized will be given at conclusions section. The vanadium redox flow battery is an electrochemical energy storage system that stores energy in two electroactive liquids called anolite and cathode. These liquids contain dissolved vanadium ions in different oxidation states, vanadium 2 plus, vanadium 3 plus in the anolite, and vanadium 4 plus, vanadium 5 plus in the cathode, which are pumped through the battery cells separated by an ion exchange membrane. The electrochemical reactions between the vanadium ions in each electrolyte generate electrical energy. The vanadium redox flow battery consists of several main components, including the two electrolyte tanks, the electrochemical cell, the ion exchange membrane, and the pumps. The electrolyte tanks are external to the electrochemical cell, and contain the anolyte and cathode. The electrochemical cell houses the anode and cathode electrodes and the ion exchange membrane that separates the two electrolyte flows. The anode and cathode electrodes are porous carbon-based materials and the ion exchange membrane is usually made of a polymer material such as nail. During the battery operation, the electrolytes are pumped from the tanks into the electrochemical cell where the oxidation and reduction reactions occur at the anode and cathode electrodes. The oxidation reaction at the anode electrode causes the vanadium 2 plus ions to be oxidized to vanadium 3 plus, releasing electrodes in the process. This process flows through an external circuit to the cathode electrode, where they are used to reduce the vanadium 5 plus ions to vanadium 4 plus. The reduced vanadium ions in the cathode flow back to the tank, while the oxidized vanadium ions in the anolyte flow to the cathode through the ion exchange membrane. The vanadium redox flow battery is a highly scalable technology that can be adapted to different power and energy requirements, making it an attractive solution for stationary energy storage applications. Its modular design and relatively low environmental impact make it a promising option for grid-scale energy storage, renewable energy integration, and other industrial applications. At Table 1, relevant parameters of real vanadium flow batteries systems are provided. Uh, the power and energy capacitance are crucial values that anyone needs to set up before designing the, these systems. Short and large-scale applications have that duality of these independent variables that are power and energy capacitors. Then the number of cells related to, the, to power must be selected and electrolyte volume must be estimated according to the energy capacitance required. Now, at methodology, the Nernst equation is widely used in redox flow battery uh, systems to predict the open circuit voltage of the battery. In a redox flow battery, two liquid uh, electrolytes contain different redox couples are separated by an ion exchange membrane. The redox couples are typically metal ions, such as vanadium, which can exist in different oxidation states. The next equation allows us to predict the open circuit voltage of the vanadium redox flow battery at any state of charge, which is essential for monitoring the performance of the battery. In practice, the open circuit voltage is kind of an approximation to estimate the state of charge. Nonetheless, uh, the Nernst equation pro provides a useful tool for understanding the behavior of redox flow battery and optimizing its performance. 
The state of charge in a vanadium rail slow battery can be estimated using the open circuit voltage and the modified Nernst equation. The Relx reaction uh, ion ratio is directly related to the state of charge of the electrolytes. However, this estimation only works when the electrolytes are balanced. The modified Nernst equation expresses the state of charge as the ratio of vanadium concentration. The open circuit voltage method is a simplified way to estimate the state of charge of vanadium rails for battery. The computation of electrolyte volume depends on the amount of electrolyte stored in the system and its concentration. The energy storage in the battery in the battery can be estimated using the product between the potential and charge. The electrolyte volume is calculated using the equation shown in the screen. Additionally, a scale factor is introduced for uh, those equations to adjust and uh, have the opportunity to graphicate the curves in a more clearly way. For the results, the state of charge can be determined using the mathematical equation described in previous sections as shown in, in figure 2 uh, by knowing the open circuit voltage of a natural rail battery and the stack configuration. The state of charge can be estimated using either the governing equation or the plot graph. The open circuit voltage state of charge curves in figure 2 are based on different stack configurations and the, and the axis represent open circuit voltage minus lambda, where lambda is a representative value selected based on the stack configuration. The, the addition of cells in the stack increases the potential and raises the open circuit voltage values. The state of charge is, cal is calculated between 20% uh, and 80% since this is the recommended range to avoid classification loss. Figure 2 is a dynamic graph that can be used to understand the relations, the relationship and calculate a state of charge. In figure 3, it can be observed that the battery's energy storage capacity is directly proportional to the volume of electrolyte present in the tanks. This means that greater electrolyte volume will result in higher energy storage, but also requires a larger space for installation of the vanadium rail for battery system. The graph also indicates that as the vanadium concentration is increases, less vanadium electrolyte is required for the same energy need, resulting in cost savings for the electrolyte. However, there are limitations on the maximum vanadium concentration, with some authors recommending not exceeding uh, 2, while others suggest 1.6 as the ideal concentration due to solubility concerns. This graph can be useful in estimating the necessary volume for a, a specific application. The vanadium rail for battery systems is a well-established technology for the energy storage that has proven to be effective for various applications. To ensure the optimal performance of vanadium rail for battery, it is essential to monitor the state of charge. The estimation of the state of charge can be achieved through various methods, and one of the most common approaches is to measure the open circuit voltage. This technique provides a good estimation of the state of charge for balanced electrolytes which simplifies the monitoring process. Moreover, the electrolyte volume required to cover a specific energy need depends on the vanadium concentration. The recommended vanadium concentration is 1.6, as it provides an optimal balance between performance and cost effectiveness. Installing large vanadium rail for battery systems with this concentration can result in significant cost savings. Finally, the graphs obtained from the analysis of the vanadium rail battery system are very useful in identifying the required parameters directly from the graphs. This makes the monitoring and management of the vanadium rail battery system easier and more efficient. In summary, the vanadium rail battery technology is a reliable and mature energy storage solution that can be adapted to various applications and proper monitoring of a state of charge and vanadium concentration can significantly 
improve its performance and cost effectiveness. Thank you.